Yes, yes, guys, welcome back to the panel show bar. We do this every weekend after the set of results, and um, I'm glad the panel show was delayed a day because today we've had some mad results, man. Big up to everyone in the in the stream. Make sure you smash a like on the on the stream. Make sure you are subscribed. If you're watching on Twitter, make sure you're following as well. Big up to Joel, Tone, Martin, and Pat, as always, for jumping on. Um, listen, let's just jump straight into today's results, man, because today's where it's at. Today is has changed. Really, the course of, of of where this Premier League could be going, um, Joe. Let me come straight to you on this one, bro. I mean, two losses, yeah. And and to be honest with you, like, and I genuinely thought it was these were like two bankers. And and I know people will say Aston Villa are pretty good, but we smacked Aston Villa up last week. They just played Europa League football on Thursday, and to get beat two nil, Liverpool one nil at home to Palace, not not looking good, Brev. I didn't even think. You know, I actually forgot that Villa played Europa League. On that, that makes it even worse, doesn't it? Um, I think um, it's just mad. Like I, Villa was the one that, like you say, that everyone sort of looked at and thought, "Well, there's a chance that points are dropped here somewhere." But um, but I was the same as you. I kind of thought, given what we did some a couple of weeks ago, I just thought, right, well, you know, maybe someone else will take points off Arsenal instead. I didn't really think anything was gonna gonna happen. And I mean, Palace, man. Like, I mean, given the form they're in, and again, what we did to him, like just last week. You kind of just think, well, this isn't the weekend where the title race is is going to have any significant changes. Like it's just going to be service as normal for 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 all three clubs involved. But I, I mean, having watched, I, I didn't watch most of the Arsenal game. I have to say, but like the Liverpool game, having watched that, like it was it was it was so it was so funny just watching it because it was it was one of those games where like when you saw like, do you know when normally you're watching a team who you don't want to win, and you see the opposition miss loads of chances. And you just think, right, well, they're obviously going to go up the other end and score then. But Liverpool were also missing every chance that they had to score at the same time. So it got to about 70 minutes. And I was thinking, you know what? I think it was when Curtis Jones missed his one-on-one -on -one that he had. I was thinking, you know what? This is this is it. Liverpool are actually going to drop points today. And then same with same with um, Arsenal as well. When, they were, when, when Liverpool got to the point around 85, 90 minutes, and same with Arsenal as soon as they went 1-0 down, I was like, I don't really care what happens now because as long as they score, a, even if they score a goal, mm. points have been dropped. Like it's mm. obviously great that they both lost, but 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 drop points is all I'm really asked about at this stage. Um, so yeah, cra crazy. I just, I, I mean, I mean, if, I think from, one of my mates actually did put a bet on for both of those teams to win and got odds of 185 to one. So um, that's what that's what the that's what the odds of those two teams winning were. And um, I don't think, yeah. I think fair, if you if you're someone who's put a bet on it, then fair play to you because I'm starting to win. I, I, I've seen I've seen MCFC lads put 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 a couple of quid on it as well. So he he, he won some money out yeah. of it as well. But it's just crazy, man. And like I was watching Arsenal, yeah. Like Arsenal, having just seen Liverpool drop points, like lose, like this is this was a, such a big opportunity for Arsenal to kick on and and basically just say see you later to Liverpool and and, and for those to lose as well, you, you know, on top of on top of Liverpool at home to Palace. And if you look at the fixtures, right, because I'm I'm here saying we should go on and win the league from here now, like, to be honest with you, with, with the fixtures that are remaining, like, we, we should go on and win the league. But have you seen the fixtures that Liverpool and Arsenal have still got? they got some crazy fixtures, lads. And, like, here's what I'm thinking. I don't think Liverpool and Arsenal win the remaining six games. I think it's unlikely. And if that happens, that means it gives us a little bit of a, a breathing room. Now, I don't think we should really approach any of our football matches in that sort of fashion. I think we should approach them going, we need to win six out of six. But, I mean, we're in a good place here, Martin. I mean, I don't, I don't know what you're saying in terms of like where the league is now. Like, some people are saying it's done. I've been telling you where it was in October and everyone <laughs> called me happy, clappy, glued <laughs> and everything else. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> Everyone's put me on planet somewhere else, you know. <laughs> happy clappy, blah blah. Do you know what it is? I've, I've read this book and seen this script a thousand times. Until Arsenal stop trying to win battles and start trying to win a war, they're never going to win the league. The more the more stuck on trying to win little battles, like the that we've never lost the Manchester City trophy. Congratulations. It, 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 too many players, too many fans are trying to win little awards. And City have done what we've always done, sat in the shadows, second gear till about February, March, and then we go bang. And people think I'm mad. We we have been on this run since December the 6th. Mm. Everyone has chose to ignore it and mm -hmm. 
Oh, talk about it. By the way, Scott Connor, by the way, we're now the top goal scorers in the whole league. So stick your 8 0 really up your rear end there, Arsenal. <laughs> that really helps you. That helps you loads. <laughs> and I'm not even playing this arrogant thing. It's the case of I know what my team do in the business end of the season. They've done it for three or four years. Until Pep Guardiola leaves this football club, we will rinse and repeat every single time because Pep uses the first four months as pre season. And then we go, right, let everyone, we do, you said it earlier in the stream, we let everyone go four or five points clear. And then we go, carry on, carry on, carry on. Right, foot down. We Arsenal have exhausted themselves out. You think so? You think they're tired? Exhausted. They live on emotion. Yep. If they're not physically yeah. drained, they're emotionally drained, that's for sure. And and listen, yeah. I'm not saying we, you know, to me, I do think we'll win the league because we're in a point, we're in a position now where I do think we'll end up getting the goal difference back. Mm. Big time. And I also think, I don't think we will, but I, we can even probably afford to drop draw a game somewhere. The Tottenham game doesn't worry me so much because that's the final week of the season. Mm-hmm. If City have to win at Tottenham in that final week, they'll win. Mm. City are just late. They're, they're like at the, what we call Erling Haaland, this Terminator robot cyborg. Pep Guardiola is the real cyborg Terminator here. When the guy gets laser focused, he <clears> doesn't <throat> lose ground and he goes. And I don't, you know, to me, there's been too many obituaries said of Manchester City Football Club this season. And I just hope we we stand up and we're proud in this next few weeks. You know, we're 27, 28 games unbeaten mm. in our comps. And mm. nobody talks about it enough. No one talks. Why Why does no one talk about it, though? It's weird, isn't it? No one talks about that one. Because we've, 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 actually, we've actually not performed very well in those games, a lot of them. You think that's we've why been, people yeah, are just we've not been, looking at the results? Been, people are just looking at the performances. So I've been I've been hearing a lot of like a lot of neutrals. To be fair, are the ones I've heard who've been looking at it and just going, "Ah, oh, well, you know what? This is what this is what City do." Like they just sort of you know, when we were beating, like was it Everton who we smashed at one point in the run? Like I remember after that, I listened to a, a neutral podcast. I can't remember, I can't remember who I think it might have been the Guardian football podcast podcast actually, and they sort of just said, "Well, this is what City doing it. It's like it's February, March. They they're gonna they're, they've turned on. They're gonna go win the league now." But I was watching our performances during this run, thinking we just don't look at it. And we're, and and to be and to be honest, up until about up until about two weeks ago, I I, I would have you know, I, I I didn't think we did. I've and and I've it's been a good couple of weeks, but there's still more opportunity. Like we still could drop points going forward. I, I don't think we do. I think now this is kind of the point where you know psycho mode sort of just like settles in and we just like we know we've got a league to win if we just win mm. what six more premier league games i think i think it's at the point where pep and the squad both just they, they 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 know how to do this like this is what this is what they do now um but yeah i can kind of i can kind of understand why because i've been one of the city fans who's been a, a, certainly at points in this last sort of two or three months watching arsenal batter everyone four five nil like week after week while we've been struggling to one nils and two nils, letting the goal difference slip, like drawing with every top six team that we come up against. Like we 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 have for large parts of the season not looked as good as the unbeaten since December sixth record would suggest. However, at the end of the season, if we've won the league, I really could not care less. Like it's 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 kind of mad how we've been just just by just through the process. And then, and this is actually why, strangely enough, because Martin you said there that that, that Arsenal have been have felt like the run off emotion. I actually thought that based on the last couple of months that Arsenal have looked the most likely to win it. I think that they've looked like the team that defend defensively they're so obviously today and today and, and, and um Tuesday against against Bayern kind of make this look a bit silly, but defensively they've been so solid this season. Like there's a reason why even though we've scored more goals on them, their goal difference is higher because they're defending really, really well through games. And I thought that that, like, obviously, diff- typically titles are built on that kind of defence. Like, if you can't be beat, if, if, you're, if you're difficult to beat, then it makes it much easier to win. Um, and I still think that, I, I know that the emotion side of things has, has always been the downfall of both Arsenal and Liverpool, and don't get. And, and I think for Liverpool, I think Liverpool are done. Like it's game over for Liverpool. Like they've they've got too they've had too much riding on this Klopp farewell. And I think the FA Cup and the Europa League plus 
two back-to-back draws in the Premier League going in the space of what two weeks? I think that's going to just—they're just—they're just done. Like emotionally, physically, that that team is done. But Arsenal, I think they can still. They can still go on and win. Conce- conceivably, Arsenal can go in and win every game between now and the end of the season. Like I, I, that wouldn't that wouldn't shock me at all based on what they've been looking like. It wouldn't me now. I won't lie. It would me. Know. Yeah, it would me. Really? Yeah. Based on yeah. one, based on yeah. one game. No, but it isn't just one game, Joe. Look, the last two or three performances have been dodgy. They were not great at the Etihad. No, they, they were not weren't. Great at but, the Etihad. but they still. But they did enough to not lose to their main tap, like one of their main tap. Well, probably who they would look at as their main title rival. Like they, they, they did enough, and that's kind of what I looked you at. You know what it is for me. City fans have looked at their, their results, and they didn't look at who they were playing and when they were playing them. With all due respect, they were playing Sheffield United at a time who were but rock bottom and just had nothing about them. Now, obviously, they've improved yeah. since then because yeah. they're now in a, they're now trying to have a last tilt for staying up. But, you know, they, 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 they were not going blazing, you know, United, Liverpool, those, they were not doing that. If they were doing they did, that... They did, beat, they did beat Liverpool. They beat Liverpool but, in that run. And Newcastle. And, I mean, also Newcastle don't look great this season, but, like, they beat Newcastle. Yeah, they beat you throw Arsenal, me Newcastle, um, Joe, come on. Liverpool. They beat Liverpool beat West Ham. Well. Yeah, like, they've, they've, yeah. they've got... They've had, they, they, they have beat good teams in this run, which is... And, and conceded well, so very few City, goals. But you don't hear from it from City fans. <laughs> Sorry, some City fans are a bit, a bit. And even Pep starts, Pep has, has had sly digs this season about it. Because even they're amazed by some of the reaction by some of the fans. Because I think Pep some has of the, you know, the fans every year. No, no Joe, but I think, and I think sometimes I think some fans fall into this. What we got against Real Madrid and Bayern Munich last season was so remarkable. That was never going to continue week in, week out. And some mm-hmm. fans are wanting that. If we're not winning five or six nil, fans moan. It baffles me, honestly, this season. I think I said it on the last one. I think some city bands have become a little bit spoilt this year. I do, but that was always going to happen, Martin. I think. I think when you've done what we've done, you will get a certain sorry, a certain group. That sounds awful, but you'll you'll get fans who <clears throat> expect the first half of Real Madrid. Not every game, but every so often. We haven't. The frightening thing, just to switch slightly, is. The frightening thing is, and we said this on your show, LB, I think a week or two ago, same panel, I think, pretty much, is City have been around a 6 out of 10, I think, this season. Mm. And I said at the time, I think Arsenal have peaked, which is what Joe hinted at there. They've beaten... Arsenal have been great this season. They've been the best team, in my opinion, to this point. Mm -hmm. To this very point. Yeah, performance-wise, they have been the best, what are we, 32 games? And then us and Liverpool kind of not at their best either of those two but no actually Liverpool a bit better I'd say but it, that's the point I think is what we were trying to say all the way to this point was we were always a point two points three points off and we hadn't even played particularly well and now now we're just starting to see the signs and mm-hmm. now we're starting to see the signs of Arsenal just starting you know by Munich who heads are down not playing well. Uh, you know, Arsenal struggled with them. I didn't see the game, just what I've read. I sort of watched them today. They were okay first half, Arsenal. Second half, they were terrible. I don't recall them really creating their chance. Um, so you're starting to see Arsenal fold at just the right time. And that's why I agree with Martin. That I would be amazed if Arsenal won every game. I- absolutely staggered if they did. I think they'll drop at least... Points well, in that least well, these are the, the these six. are the fixtures, bro. These are the fixtures now to the end of the season. Now, yeah, I, I look at these fixtures, and Pat, I'll come to you on this one. Um, I, I look at Arsenal and Liverpool, and listen, it wouldn't. But before today, I was saying Arsenal could win every game to the rest of the season. But now they've dropped points today. I would be very surprised now if Arsenal won every game for the rest of the season. You know, they, they've still got to go to Wolves. Uh, they got to play Chelsea. They got to play Spurs. They still got to go to United. Um, I, I'd be surprised if they win the, the remaining six. Liverpool, they've still got to play Everton away. They've still got to play Spurs. They've got to play Villa away. They've got to go to West Ham. Whereas if you look at City, all I, I know all games are tough on that, but like in terms of like the big game, we've only really got that Spurs match. So I don't know, Pat. I mean, look at those fixtures. Where, where are you at with this? 
Well, let's just go. Let's just go straight first up and uh, have a look at um, what Arsenal and Liverpool have while we play the FA Cup semi final. I just can't. I just find I'll be amazed if Liverpool and Arsenal are able to get a rebound so quickly. You know, considering Champions League and Europa League is coming up midweek, and then they've got to go Wolves away, who have shown they are no slouches this season and have exceeded mm-hmm. way more expectations than what most of us thought at the start of the season under Gary O'Neill. They've been doing a fantastic job. And uh, Fulham away, they've proved they've proved in recent years that they are difficult. They are difficult to play at Craven Cottage, so they are not going to be easy. And who knows by the end of next weekend, you know the you know the the, the issues that those two clubs could be having could be amplified, could be magnified even more. So I'm really I'm really folk, I'm really interested as much as I'm interested to see how we you know we go against um, Chelsea in the semi final. I'll certainly be keeping an eye on uh, both those fixtures as well because um, they are not going to be easy fixtures for, for two teams in a title race that are looking to rebound from some poor results. The rest of the the rest of the fixtures, yeah, I think I think most of, most of us are agreeing that it doesn't matter what fan base you're in, City probably has the better run home. All those fixtures, none of those teams are slouches. So, but I still expect us to get the job done. Um, whether we can go or, in, or remaining six out of six remains to be seen. But I think that as long as we stick to our laurels, just keep doing what we're doing. We've got the wind at our back now. You know, tail's up. We're ready to go. And I think the, the more and more, you know, the, the more and more we just keep can continue putting consistent performances in, get those victories, then there's every every reason why Arsenal and Liverpool are just going to fall away. Mm, it's certainly possible. It's certainly possible with those fixtures. Uh, I want to speak about the fact that we we're, we're actually going to be couple of games behind uh, by the time we play our next game because of the way mm. of the FA Cup scheduling has come. Uh, I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys on the panel, I don't know if you guys in the chat know, know about this, but I'll go through that in just a second. Before I do, let me just come to some of these super chats. By the way, big up to everyone that's locked in. Over uh, 1,300 people tuned in, 700 on YouTube, uh, nearly 600 on Twitter. So please make sure you are smashing a like, subscribing, following uh, the accounts and stuff. Big up to uh, Ben. Ben Les says, can't believe we caught life in this Premier League title because this season we've been shit most of the season. This league is not serious um, with, with with the five. And uh, he then comes in and says, Martin being so ingenuous. Ingenuous? Is that a word? Ingenuous? Is that uh, ingenuous? I think judging by the rest of the comment, I'm assuming he means to say disingenuous. Disingenuous. Yeah, that's what I'm Martin being sorry, Martin. Martin being so disingenuous again. I'll let you respond. Martin being so disingenuous again. It's crazy. No City fan is saying we need to win five 0 or more, but our performances and tactics have been poor. I, I will obviously let you respond to that, bro. Um, you want, no, just, <laughs> no, so everyone, people can support how they want and think how they want. I just I disagree with it because I think we've got to look at the way teams set up against us now. Mm. T- teams were not coming to the Etihad. I'm low blocking as much as this. Mm-hmm. Every team's even Arsenal are coming doing it now. Every single team is doing it. And Pep never plays the same tactics in a, in 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 a different season. Each season, we'll do it next season. We'll change, we'll tweak tactics again. You watch. Mm-hmm. We we never do it. We've even changed tactics mid season. When last season we we did it. I'm not listen, but I kind of go for what I hear on like on my own channel and that. I do hear a lot of, oh, we won five one, but we conceded a goal. And 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 Pat and I'm like, what what what? what? It's like but some fans are a little bit it's FIFA and we shouldn't hmm. be conceding. Living goals. in the FIFA verse, yeah. And the reason why I think some of the goals were conceded look so shocking is because it's the only way they're, they're getting through us. Hmm. I look at that Chelsea game, the the four four, and the Tottenham game, and the Liverpool game, in a very different light because I think Pep was dicking around at that point for some weird reason. Don't know what he was trying, but he's ne- he was trying to be so open because that was the time of the season. Remember when Rodri was just lonely man in the middle and no one mm. was going to help him. I think he was he trying was to blow the opposition up. away, Martin. I think the first yeah. time I seen it was Stamford Bridge. Well, yeah, well, we I don't know what he was trying to do. As soon as, soon as, I, soon as I seen the team line up, I, I, then I said to myself, "This manager don't respect this team. He's just, he's just put the, the, the players out." And uh, I think he done that in a few games. And if for some better defending in a couple of those games, we probably would have won. Uh, but I think you're probably right. I think he just sort of like you know. But, but I guess at that point of the season, as long as you're staying with the pack, you can take a risk or two. 
you know what I mean? But it's like we all said, and like we when it gets losing, to... we were we were drawing, we were, we were, we were getting yeah. away with it a little bit. In, in, yeah. in all honesty, Joe mm -hmm. has got a point there. He has said it is to where we, there was parts of the season where we did get away with it, but I think Pep probably was messing around at that point and was trying to tweak things and see what. Because hey, listen, uh, it's like with the players we've signed, we get a bit. Oh, he's no good in October. He's no good in November. Mm -hmm. And now Gabardiel's settled, and I'll see what Gabardiel's bringing. Doc I saw it. I saw it straight away. I saw it straight away. Some yeah. players do need that little bit of time just to settle and adjust, and sometimes they need that. You know, not everyone's religious, but they need that come to Jesus moment. They need that yes. time. We finally got a KDB fit. We finally got Jack Grealish back fit properly and mentally back. Mm. Yeah, see, we've got see, every, you don't everything get... just sort of slipping in a little bit at the right time mm. for me yeah we don't get enough praise i don't think for the fact of how hard we are to beat one of the things with ferguson's united used to be was how hard they were to beat used to get that Mourinho's chelsea as well god they they play crap or not to their level but they're so hard to beat you never really hear that with city because everyone expects the fluid three four five mm. six stuff and we don't do the ugly side we're not known for the ugly side like Mourinho slot and some of Ferguson's teams were you never get see I tell you what City you know they dig in they're not playing well but they they nick to win it's all yeah they don't look the same do they they should be winning 4-0 and that's yeah roughly sort of along with what Martin was saying could you also just that's saying that I'll show you if you look at the home and away records City at the top if you look at the points per game home and away City at top on points per game on home and away record. So I, I don't worry about we've got two home and four away. I don't worry about that because we've got the best away record in the league and we have done all season. Mm. I'm genuinely, you know, Arsenal have played probably the best football, but was it a couple of years back? Liverpool played sexy, amazing football, didn't win the league. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I will just say, yeah. if it's all right, but Martin, that it, it, it's okay to, in my view, cr criticise and say, we haven't been quite as good and criticised performances, missed chances and all that sort of stuff. I think the other side is the ones that completely write us off, for example, you know, after we drew a Palace or what have you, we cannot win the title. It's, we can't do it. And, and stuff like that is more what irks me. Not the people that will say, didn't play very well for a few weeks and all that sort of thing and people criticise that sort of stuff. That's, that's mm. fine to point that sort of stuff out. That's somebody's view. No issue with that. I think the, the, to go a bit further, it's the writing off of the team. I think that does me in a bit. I see it on the chat every now and again. We cannot win this. We cannot do that. And it's like, well, that's, that's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ludicrous. How can you possibly write this team off? And that's something Martin and I spoke about on a, a previous show, I think. Yeah. I think it was on your 12-hour um, one about it, saying, you know, about writing City off. It's just balmy. And that's the side that does my head in. Mm. It just depends to me. To me, it kind of just depends what kind of what. It depends who you're listening to. Like, I mean, uh, re like how many people realistically think that City was shit all season? Like, no one. Like, I don't think anyone's actually sat here saying City is shit. Do, and do you know what it is, Joe? It's it's the indirect way they do it too. Some some outlets will even talk. They'll talk other teams up by talking us down. I may, you know, may, yeah, like maybe. Yeah, maybe. They might be winning, but they're not winning pretty. Look at Arsenal with their five and six nils every week. Mm. Yeah, but I think, but I, I do think there's an element of truth in that though. Like we haven't been winning pretty. Like we've been winning by a goal or a two, or, a, or like yeah. the odd goal or maybe two here and there. And we have, and we have honestly, we have looked crap in a lot of games over the time. Like, it, the games against the big six this season, we've been an absolute like the the, the big six. Obviously, apart from United, who we've who we've smashed both times. Like we've been we've been like a joke. Like this is why I don't. This is why I don't think that we'll. Obviously, I think Spurs in the context of where it lies in the season and what could potentially be on the line in that game, I think will, I'd, I'd certainly hope will be a different, a different matter. But the fact that we've not been able to beat anyone other than United in the, in the big six this season is like a, is a serious concern. Like, especially when you consider the state that Chelsea are in and the fact we still haven't been able to do that is, is quite, is quite mad. Um, but I think, I just, I don't know. I just, I just don't know. I just don't know where all these city fans are that think that that think that we've been shit for three months and that we've been that we've been bad. Like I, I don't. I think, I think the people are allowed to see that and say because I think it's fair to say that standards 
certainly compared to the previous seasons with this mostly apart from obviously the loss of Gundwan and Mares, mostly the same group of players. Standards have dropped like a lot this season and it's because we've got such great players. We've got Foden, we've got Haaland, we've got Alvarez, we've got like these kind of players who can put in 20, 30 goal seasons with no problems at all. Like Haaland's had like a for me, Haaland's had a shit season by like his standards, by the standards of what he has put in in his entire career. He has been below par for him. And he's still on 30 plus goals this season. That's how mm. that's how that's how mad this squad is. And this is why mm. fans come into seasons with expectations mm. that we should be winning the league, that we that we that we you know that we should be performing better than we have been in the last, you know, in the last two to three months. And that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that we've been performing badly. But there's been so many games, particularly against the big six, where I've just been thinking, like last season, we would have killed these off, and we haven't. And that's, and no one can tell me that's just because Gundogan's gone. Like that is because, for whatever reason, Pep's changed something tactically, or Pep's playing Alvarez and Doku too much together, and that's meaning we've got no control. Whatever it is, like we have been not great this season. It's just because we have such ridiculously good players that we have been able to hang on to the point that we are where we are now, and. Yeah, I just, I, I, I just don't know. I just, I just don't, I just don't see the, I just don't see this like wave of City fans who just, who, who've been writing us off since, since October. Like it just, it, it, it hasn't happened. Like it's just we've, we've, we've been in it. We've been, we've been in and around it. And I think some people have, quite a lot of people probably have been quite fairly saying that standards have been below what they have been the last year or two. But I think that's fair because factually they have been like we'd have walked to this league like two or three years ago. We'd have walked it last season, but. Yeah. But we haven't, and like that's just. And, and you, know, you know what I say as well. Just, just, sorry, sorry, yeah, okay. sorry. The, the other thing I'd say as well is just like even though maybe 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 Joe's right, and he probably is in terms of like we've not been as good this year, but we've still been winning. And even when we've not won, we've not been losing games. I think we've lost three games in the Premier League all season, which is I think is lower than lower than Liverpool and lower than Arsenal. So. You know, even in those games that maybe we've not been great, like we've still been getting something and, and, and pushing forward. And 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 the thing is, and, and this is the thing, right? You cannot win the league in December. You cannot win the league in January. You can't win it in November. But you can lose the league in those months. Everyone agrees with that, right? This period here, April and May, is d- decides who wins the title. And what we did is, even when we weren't playing particularly well, we just stayed with the pack. We just stayed with Liverpool. And we stayed with Arsenal. And we needed a little bit of luck at times. Maybe some of them dropped points or whatever. And obviously, to, we needed, obviously, once we lost control of the Premier League when we drew against Arsenal, we obviously needed Liverpool and Arsenal to drop uh, to drop points. But we we stuck in there. We got our, our business handled yesterday. And then today we get rewarded. And that ultimately is, is you know, is, is, is how, you know, races are won, isn't it? You stay with the pack. And at the end, you know what I mean? If you watch, like, the Tour de France, yeah, you don't just start sprinting from the rip. You know what I mean? They all stay together, and then when they get to see the finish line, boom! They put the foot down, and you know, winner takes it. And that's looks like what we're doing. And you know, at the end of the day, if you win the title, it don't really matter how you get there. I suppose it's just it, it, it's you, you do win it. Sorry, Tom. What was you saying, bro? Uh, sorry, mate. Um, I was just going to say, yeah, I see what Joe's saying about the previous seasons. Last season, I disagree because it, we we actually weren't that good up until sometime around the end of March, when Arsenal were eight points clear of us, by the way. So, and I think every it was when we Liverpool straight after that um, international break. It was just over a year ago from today. If you go yeah, back, really go back to that one at home, that's when we hit our stride. Go back to yeah, that first game where we drew. Did you see the meltdown after that? Oh, my Lord. Oh, yeah, 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 everyone, yeah. Everyone wanted Edison out yeah. and all the rest of it. It, it, <laughs> it. Last season was unbelievable. But like the exact thing you've just said there, LB, about the race, right? We stayed with the pack and the exact time, like we are now, what's happening now? We're just starting to click. We're just getting into gear now. And we're starting to step it up. Hopefully, hopefully we beat Madrid on Wednesday. And then if we go and beat Chelsea, everyone's buzzing, flying. Oh, my God, we actually could win a treble. It's possible again. It's possible. But I don't, yeah, I see what you're saying, Joe. In other seasons, we could have walked it. But last season, up until this sort of point, we were no better than we were this season. I, I remember some of the performances around December, January were shocking last season. Like, really poor. Eight, nine points of Arsenal, titles done, and no one's catching Arsenal. And then, bang. Bad, 
Yeah, we got beat by Brentford. I think that draw against Everton too. That was a shocker. That's yeah, yeah the one all they scored that screamer, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. And, and it's just to make a point, really, that I think people look at the treble and go, and I think they do this with previous seasons, even Centurions and all this sort of stuff. The amount of games we actually won. 2 1. I think we beat Fulham in one of those 2 1. And we literally, we were so time. lucky. Say that. Yeah, some of our win yeah. streaks, we always try to define our win streaks by the big wins that we've had. And, you know, if you, if mm. you go, off, go, well, go off the win streak in the Centurion season, you know, you think of that 7 2 against Stoke, you think of 5 0 at home against Liverpool and that. Yeah. You don't think about the ones that we grinded out, those two ones like Huddersfield away, Bournemouth away. You know, it's always Spot talked on. about. It's always talked about the high score lines, the big wins, and things like that. And that's what's happening this season. Everybody's talking about the five or six nils that Arsenal did. But they haven't talked anything about the fact that we've gone without a loss for more than a quarter of a year. Six Spot of December, no as, as Martin said, six of right. December. We're, that's that's yeah. a quarter of a year. Amazing. Basically, we've gone without a win and or without a loss. Sorry, and that yeah. is something that needs to be put in perspective. And that's you know, great. you know, for a fact, yeah. it's not going to be spoken about until the end of the season. So, yeah. look, I think, I think, and I'm not just using this as an example because obviously the Masters golf is on right now, but if there are any golf fans out there in the chat or if you guys are golf fans, they always say the Masters truly kicks off at the back nine on a Sunday. Well, guess what? We're on the back nine of the Sunday right now if you turn your TV on, I think. And then this is this point in the season now is basically the back nine at Augusta. If you're in striking distance, this is where you start to capitalise and you take advantage of it. Mm. And, I'll be, and I, I, said, I said that. I was, I was outside the ground when we drew 1-1 against Liverpool earlier this season, Hugh Murray had me on one of his City Extra fan camps. And I said, we don't need to be blitz in the competition. We just need to be within striking distance. We don't know what striking distance is, but Pep and the lads know what striking distance is. And this might be it now. We had a chance to play before they did. We, we, assert, we asserted ourselves with a convincing win, put ourselves mathematically on top of the table now. That's going to that's gonna play on the minds of Liverpool and Arsenal uh, players. And... I don't know if I don't know if the, that was a result of it, but I tell you what, it's, it's going to create a psychological advantage, and that's um, mm -hmm. that's something that we can just springboard from for the remaining six games. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, just to piggyback off them, out there is it, didn't, it was the charges that got us going last season. Yep, those yeah. charges are what kickstarted us. We were we were not we we personally, I thought we were playing worse last season. This, Back first part of last season. So if you remember this season, we'd started, is it the best start under Pep? We'd have won the first six, seven on the bounce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. So, and, and then you go, okay. And then the season before, you know, we go back to the Villa game, Brighton game last game, Villa game last game. It was only, really, it was only the Centurion season where we literally, from start to finish, Played mm. sexy football and went bang. Here we go, from mm -hmm. start to finish. Yeah, we did. Although there was even a couple in that one, the Saints two one, where Sterling scored right at the end. There was a little, I think it was yeah. Centurions one. I get on the pitch. Yeah. Oh, was that that game? That <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Game. It was, it's Martin was already halfway home because he wanted to beat the rush out of the car park. And I, I stayed <laughs> and watched that Sterling. Goal. That was epic. That was absolutely epic. And I remember Mendy running running down the pitch on one leg. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I remember. I remember. It's yeah, crazy. It was, but, but even that season, and I'm not just picking individual games. There'll always be games that you win late on. But I remember about a month, six weeks period during that, and that's why that goal was so big because City had just bit just a touch to that mm. Saints game, and it's like, oh dog, God, we're starting to drop off, and then bang. That happened and we were flying again. Mm. So there's always parts and seasons. I don't think this season's been, like I've said, about a six out of ten. It's been a bit below standards. But I don't think the other season, sometimes when people look back and reminisce, it looks better than it was in terms of all the all round performances, mm. if you see what I mean. That's probably fair. Right, let, let, let me come to some of these super chats and then I want to speak about some more of these fixtures and, <clears> and how this plays out. Big up to LB says uh, Liverpool fans, oh, sorry, Liverpool players and Arsenal players are absolutely spent. Yeah, uh, well, I think, I think, uh, I think Ali Watkins spoke apparently and said that they, they recognised that um, Arsenal were knackered and went for him, which is kind of weird because Villa played on Thursday. Um, I think Liverpool, you know what's funny? I said this last week, man, just, I said it last week, or just before they got beat off United, I said, the emotion that Liverpool are playing under of the whole Klopp situation, it's great when things are going for you. And you can use that, and you can get a little bit extra out the tank. Yeah, a bit of extra MPG, squeeze an extra bit of mileage out. 
example, Nottingham, Nottingham Forest away and Nunes scored in the, the 100th minute or whatever it was. But emotion is a two-way street, man. And it can quite easily turn and go the other way. Do you know what I mean? And then you start doing shit that you're not meant to be doing because you're not playing football. You're playing like emotion and you're thinking about this, you think about that. So um, they, to me, look in a dangerous position now because, you know, a couple of, they're out Europa League, let's be honest. Uh, and now, you know, they've, they've got tricky fixtures as well in the Prem. So let's see what they do, man. But it's not looking good for them. Bayern, uh, Bayern, 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 says Dr. <laughs> Foot is a Bavarian. Big up to you, bro. Um, he's a Bayern fan. He, he, he supports whoever Arsenal are playing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he changes his name every every stream. Big up to MMC, says um, Glad Bottle has lost it again. Um, Dirty Fowling Bastards, says MMC. Speaking um, of Germany, too, I think we should congratulate Leverkusen on the Bundesliga win. Yeah, like they it. brilliant. They yeah. it, bro. Yeah. I tell you what, if they go on and won the treble, man, uh, not not the same treble as wow. us, but a treble. Do you know, do you know what? I, I really hope we win the Champions League because I'd love to play them in the Super Cup. I think that would be a great yeah. game next season. Yeah, that would be class. God, yeah, really good game. Yeah. That would be class, one hundred percent. LB says the big thing is it's back in our hands. Factual information. Yep. Um, Joe, it's football, mate. The game's the game, bro. With a with a sunglasses on. <laughs> Just before you go on LB, I just got to bounce, but I'll jump back on when I'm um, when I'm in the car. Yeah, yeah, no worries. See you in no a minute. Minute. few minutes. Uh, Doctor Footy is now a Villa fan. Says thoughts on Rice's comments. Poor mentality. I've not actually seen him. Any of you guys seen Rice's comments? Let's have a check. No, a few people have said about name. this. If he, he said some weird dejected. shit, no. Nah, if he said some weird shit, man, because these Arsenal. But you remember last year in, in the in the summer break when they were all like, "Oh well, we knew we was going to lose the league when Saliba got injured." It was like. Why are you saying that for? That's such a weird thing to say. If they said, yeah. if he said something weird, now there's something um, wrong. If you, if you if you can't win games of football, don't lose. You look up at the clock and see 15 to go. It's nil nil. If you aren't going to win the game, you take a point. Well, piss that. Yeah, I don't know about yeah, that. The, That's the, weak the, the, mentality. I mean, that Sorry. this is the thing about. I'm about, assuming about, what he's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Obviously, in theory, he's right. But the thing is, when you want to win the Premier League, you've got to risk losing to, yes, to win yeah. the football match. Well, they took um, they took they took Odegaard off, didn't they? With like with yeah. what was it twenty minutes to go, and they took him off. People, and I'm like, that's saying, injured, yeah, 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 yeah. been been injured though. Odegaard. Oh, really? I was going to say. I thought someone said. I seen a couple of people in the. Yeah, it might, it might have been. Did another you see the smoke Zinchenko and Jesus getting by the way? Yeah, yeah. yeah Zinchenko has a little while. Well, Jesus was. There's a reason we sold Jesus. It's because he's not a striker. I sold Arsenal fans yeah. this. I remember I did a video with Don Robbie, right? Sponsored video, and we just signed Alvarez, <laughs> yeah. And they just signed Jesus. <laughs> and um, I remember saying to him, I said, "Yeah, I mean, he was like, yeah, but we got Jesus off you." I was like, "Yeah, but we got Alvarez. Alvarez is a better striker than Jesus." And he looked at me. <laughs> he looked at me so weird and was like, "What do you mean, Alvarez is a better striker than Jesus?" Alvarez is a better finisher than Jesus. Mm. He's like, what? What? Oh, what? Yeah. I was like, no, 100%. I say, Jesus is not a striker, mate. I've always said, I thought his best position at City was on the wing. And I'll maintain yeah. that position to, to yeah. the day I die, mate. Like, he's a winger, in my opinion. He's, like, he's, he's basically like an attacker that can kind of play anywhere on the front line. But you don't want him to be your out and out striker. And the proof was in the pudding, by the way. Because when Sergio Aguero got injured at City, and he had like nine or ten games, <laughs> he started every single one. His mom. I don't think he scored a single goal. So, yeah, listen, he's a good player. I like him and that. I like, I don't slag him off, but like, I just don't think he's a striker. The same as Zinchenko, LB. He, he was always, Zinchenko was always a steady end. He got you through, like, some games where you needed to rest a couple of players. But when it comes to the Champions League semi final, Zinchenko at left back was not where you really wanted. Yeah. <laughs> no. you knew it was, and that's not a dig. Again, steady Eddie, thank you. But there was a reason we sold him. Yeah, the squad players at best. He was mint for well, ages, though, when he's in He had a, he had a good year or two where he, he was did. genuinely great at left back for us. Oh, I mean, no, that, he, was, I guess... he was brilliant, Joe. But I just mean, when we got to like the Real Madrid section, that's when sadly he yeah. sort of hit his ceiling a little bit. But but I, th I think you know what though. I think when you play players out of position, you can get away with it. Because if you remember, Fabian Delph did a fantastic job at left back for a yeah. while, and then yeah, one yeah, day. One day, it just went downhill. I think it was like Swansea away or something like that. Yeah, it just went downhill and then boom, it was never the same and he was just shy after that. And I just yeah. think that like, you can wing it. You can play. And you know what? 
you might have seen it a little bit with Alvarez at the start of the season in the midfield. Like you can get away with it for a, for a, for a period of time, but ultimately, when you're playing sport at this level, you know what I mean. You're almost disrespecting the players if you just say, "Oh, don't worry, you can play him there, or play him there, or play him there." Nah, it's at this top level sport, elite level. Like you have to play players in that actual position. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's what I'd say on, on those. And I those think that's players. a great point. Because by the way, another thing on on this. Here, We've had more injuries than we've ever had to keep players before. Yep. Mm. KDB out, Grealish out for various reasons. It's Stones in and out, in and out, like Mr. Biscuit, man. Yeah, yeah we've had so many injuries to so many key players. Yeah. It's been, it's what we've had is, his players have stepped up. Mm -hmm. Facts. And that's a good thing with Kovacic. You have a Kovacic who can do the Calvin Phillips role that Calvin mm. should have done, where you can give Rodri a rest. Calvin comes in and does a job against, no disrespect, the likes of Luton or whoever, where Calvin couldn't do... Because I'm telling you now, if we didn't have Kovacic and Calvin was here, Rodri would have played on Saturday. Mm. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably, bro. Probably, yeah. um, let me bring up some of these fixtures again. Big up to Oz. It says Rodri's red card might not have cost us this season. Um might not have cost us this season. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we probably, if we do end up losing the league, you still probably will look at that red card and go, damn, you still screwed us a little bit there, bro. <laughs> um, and big up sign says, didn't bend, bend Alexander. Trent Alexander say it means more to us. Yeah, he did say it means more to us. So let's see what he's saying now anyway. Um, yeah. Right, let me, let, let, let me bring these fixtures back up because... Um, I don't know if you guys know on the panel, you, you probably do, but I'm, there's, I'm sure there'll be people in the chat who don't know this, but because City played Chelsea, obviously um, Arsenal play Wolves next weekend, Liverpool play Fulham, and they will play Premier League fixtures there, where City don't, City play FA Cup, so we are going to have one game plus to play. Um, the following week, I believe we play Brighton after Arsenal play Chelsea and Liverpool play Everton. So we're effectively going into that Brighton game. How many points will we be behind? Worst case scenario, quick math, someone. Six Four. would be 74, yeah. So what would we be? How many points would we be behind? We'd be, we'd be four. four points behind, wouldn't we? So we'd be we'd go into that Brighton game four points behind. How, how do you think, Joe, let me come to you on this one. How do you think we're going to handle that pressure? Providing they obviously do win both of the games. Let's just go on that proviso, first of all. I mean, you've seen two, two teams. Is it only two, sorry, LB? Because the Brighton two. on the Thursday after the Chelsea game. It's only on the Thursday, Brighton, though, unless we get drawn in the Champions League on the following Tuesday. If we get past Real, then Brighton gets moved to Wednesday. Oh, it's all been moved to the Wednesday. Moved, it? so it's, but it's still that yeah. week, isn't it? So I think it's only two yeah. games. I think. Still only two games, but we're still be four points yeah. behind, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we're currently two points ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Joel, pressure. Um, I, I don't, that? I don't think I have any real concerns about how this squad handles the pressure of it. To be honest, um, I've seen enough in, um, I've seen enough from the previous seasons where we've been the team, either in either ahead or doing the chasing. Like we seem to be quite obviously a lot of. I remember after last season, a lot of Arsenal fans and I think Arteta himself was asked about it this season about whether he prefers to be the team that's sort of doing the chasing now that yeah. he's, well, this is when they weren't top and he was like well it's a bit different blah, blah blah but I think City have shown that they can you know when we're ahead and we have to win every single game like we did in 18-19 Pep and this team can do it and then when we're having to do the chasing like we did last season and like we have in other seasons where we've been behind at points in the year we can show that we don't really mind doing that either. We'll happily just keep that pressure on the opposition until until something happens to them. So I don't mm. really think I don't really think us going into a game four points behind would be a huge issue. Um, I think we'd we'd if if anything, it'd probably give the you know given the, the mentality of this team, I think it'd probably give them a bit more of a kick up the arse than it would if they were just not if if. You know, if this was like the middle of the season and like it's very much a, like, ah, it doesn't matter. We could, you know, there's, there's points to be won and lost elsewhere in the season kind of thing. Like, I feel like at, at this stage of the season, if you're four points behind, you know that the Arsenal fans and Liverpool fans will be feeling pretty bad about today. But if we <laughs> if we lose when we have four points behind already, I'm going to feel pretty fucking horrendous about how things are looking at the mo at, at that point, even if we do have a game in hand. So I think um, I think the squad will absolutely know what what they have to do to to, mm. to win. Um, and to sort of to, to get it over the line, but I'd, yeah, I, I've I've never really looked at this team and thought this lot this lot buckle under pressure 
Like the the, the one mm-hmm. thing that you can never. There's, well, there's obviously been moments like I think like they probably maybe like Leon in the Champions League a while ago and stuff like that. You could probably look at and go, yeah, they bottled that. But, but even then, Pep. Even even madness. then, that's some Pep fucking stupidity in the Champions League in it. That and the Champions League final against mm-hmm. Chelsea as well. Like again, similar thing there. Like they the players did bottle it. The only time bit, I can really but, say Joe is probably Real Madrid away two years ago. Oh yeah, God yeah, Jesus, I've, I've managed to forget about that. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the that's, that's the last the one. Only one. That's, that's probably that's the, the last one, one, and that was what two nearly two years ago, probably two years and two. Weeks Unless anyone now, else like, can think of another moment, but that's literally one of the only ones that I can remember where it's like actually like buckling under pressure, yeah. you where you can't even spot. blame Pep Guardiola or yeah, yeah, yeah. We we were we we were a little a little on the brink at Atletico Madrid. I remember that bloody hell. Do you remember the away games were one up? Suarez missed a sitter, I think, off the line. Edison, great save, and we were buckling at that point. I think oh, that was a real one because then they got then then they started a scrap with us and got got a red card out of nowhere, and then that was <laughs> yeah. just like game over from that point on. They eased the pressure for us. That was, I love that game. Yeah. That was an unbelievable yeah, that was, game. That was oh. honestly Jack Jack Grealish calling Stefan Savage a very naughty word on uh, on international <laughs> television. <laughs> is, uh, one of the greatest moments of uh, of, of his career. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, nah, it is. It, it is mad. Are, are we just are we just doing the one step at a time? I like this approach. I like the one game at a time approach, man. I feel like I should have uh, uh, applied the one game at a time rule early on in the season. It, it's yeah. it's less. I've got stressful. different viewpoints for everyone. Out oh, of our seven, yeah, I've got a different game that scares me the most. Okay, I'm going to say Forest. If I reckon you'll say. Way. Fulham away. Oh. I actually oh. nah. I think it's Forest away. Man. Brighton game. Yeah, I think Forest. Brighton. You never know what you're gonna get with them. They're a real weird. But I think if City turn up, Forest away. Yeah, Wolves. I think we win both our home games. Yeah, I mean we've got to assume we win both our own um, games. Tottenham away doesn't because I I think full spot will be done by then. Um, and I think Tottenham will know either way because I think I I think it suits us that it's been moved to that final week. Yeah, but I also don't buy yeah. into this whole thing of like they'll just let us win because they don't like. No. Yeah, that <laughs> won't happen. That. No, that just that doesn't happen. Spurs yeah. are in a little bit of free fall at the minute. I don't know what Spurs are. I've even heard Spurs fans now saying they want Ange out. <laughs> mad at the moment. I don't know what's going on at that place. So <laughs> they've gone from being they, they, they've gone from they play boring football to now it's too open football. There's no oh, pleasing a Spurs cool. fan anymore. I don't know what they want anymore. It, it, like, there's something about the North London air. I think it's Arsenal and Spurs fans every bloody week. The, the, the Spurs fans boo the team off at half time every bloody match. You hear it yeah. on the, they even mention it on soccer Saturday, whatever it's you called. You say that, they're booing again. What am today? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We did really it not long ago. It was I can't remember what game it was, but City got booed off not 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 that long ago. I can't remember which game it was. Really, they did get they did get yeah. booed off at half time. It might have been yeah, last season. Yeah. I think it was that. I think it was that point last season before the Forest game where like we were just chucking away, like like we were just going in at half time, like a, a goal or two down. I have no idea which game it was, but I do specifically remember. The team got booed off. Like it wasn't like a case of like, do you know when you get when there's just a generic boo at half time because like the team mm. aren't winning and the rest been shit. Like it was very much a, a a booing of the 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 players. I think it happens at every club. Like it, it you know what I mean. Like there's, there's there's I think people just don't like people just don't like losing. It doesn't matter which team you support. <laughs> All right, let me ask you a question. What 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 about Fulham? Excluding Spurs, what about what about Fulham makes you think this is going to be our trickiest game when? Just before you come in, you've got Forest who are in a relegation battle. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you've got you've got Wolves who are a good team. They're probably my second favorite team this season. Um, even, even maybe West Ham if they've got a fully fit squad. What what is it about Fulham that you don't like? What scares you about Fulham that doesn't scare you? It's, maybe about some of the other games. Scares me. It's not scares me. It's when Fulham turn up. The Fulham are a very flip flop team. They are. One week they're brilliant, the next week they can be on golf. The the West, see the West Ham and the Wolves don't worry me. They're at home. I'm absolutely fine. I think see, you're just saying they're bankers because they're at home, which is kind of fair. Um, the Brighton game, I don't know. I've never, I've never been 
enamoured with Brighton. I don't know. I've never been on this Brighton bus. Brighton were awful like, against Arsenal the other week. Never awful. been on it. It's a weird one. Forest, I possibly could be. I, listen, out in the two, I would say it'd be Fulham and Forest, but I just said Fulham because I think Fulham are a better team than Forest at, at home. Um, I think they've got they've got a decent manager, not great manager. They've got a decent manager who plays some nice football. Um, again, it depends what. Listen, City could win all seven, six. but out of all six, yeah, six, seven. Are we adding more games on? <laughs> no, well, we've got twelve <laughs> games left, haven't we? If you include the FA Cup final and the Champions League, sorry, um, <laughs> I'm back on the treble train. Let's not do that. <laughs> Let's not do that. Uh, my heart's not taking another double treble. Jesus. I cried on the last one. I'm not crying on that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, there's something about the Fulham thing that's really weird. I don't know. Mm. I'm not, I, I just, I don't know what it is. Fuller. I think it's probably the manager and the way he's I, like, I, I, I like the manager. I like Michael Silver. I really like, like Michael, so oh, yeah. very good. Yeah, they, but they've got a very good away record. So, like I said earlier, we have the best and the home home record on a points yeah. per game at the moment. Mm. I'm so, just begging. I'm just begging that we don't need to win at Spurs. Like genuinely, that's what I'm. That's what my. The, the, if it comes down to that, look, I, th- I know that I said before that if the, if there's something on the line, then we should we should win. And I genuinely, I I think we we probably do. But if there's any game out of those where I'm thinking we're going to drop points, or we're much more likely to drop points, it's Spurs. Like it's just mm. there's just there's no other there's no other one there that scares me. Maybe maybe current Forest because they're sort of on a bit of a you know they're on a bit of a mad scramble to stay in the league at the moment. It's not really the kind of team you want to be playing at this point in the season. It's a bit like a bit like Arsenal having to play Everton in the final game of the season. Like you don't really want those kind of games when you're in this kind of you know this this running, but. Mate, if we've got if if we ha- if we have to beat Spurs to win the league, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a grim game of football, especially if they've got like especially if their full strength eleven is out and is 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 available to play. Cause... But you know what, Joe? I don't think we do. I don't think we do because I'm I'm betting. Yeah. Do you think it'll be I over? Or, I, or we'll have or we'll have a we'll have the we'll have the, 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 we'll have yeah. the presumption yeah. Arsenal Liverpool are winning all because uh, yeah exactly Martin and I don't think they do I don't think yeah. Arsenal get through Wolves Chelsea Tottenham Bournemouth Man United with Fuck all hell, wins that's a, that's a no rough way. group of fixtures that it's, is that's it's disgusting and the same with Liverpool yeah. I don't think Liverpool come away from Fulham Everton derby match West Ham Tottenham Villa. With 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 all wins, and if they do, then fucking fair play. But they've already lost. Both of them have lost today. I think, I just don't think they do. So I actually think, I actually think the next four games for us are the most important ones because I think if we win our next four games, I believe that we won't even need to win at to, at, at Spurs. And then that whole this conversation is so... about Spurs just does it. Great even point. No, is a great point. Man. This is so yeah. weird. Like I remember two weeks ago, and it can't just. It can't just have been Villa and Palace that did this. But two weeks ago, I remember looking at all of our, like all three teams, like fixture list between now and the end of the season. And I distinctly remember thinking Liverpool had the toughest one. No, sorry. Uh, Liverpool had the easiest one and Arsenal had the toughest one. And we were sort of like in the middle. We got the fucking, we got the easiest one by some distance looking at this, like looking at this I list. Like, the no, that's changed now, Joe. Everyone's saying we've got the easiest run now. Because we've yeah, <laughs> we've got I didn't think that we got, had the easiest one. I didn't think I we think had it, the easiest. It one. It might just be because we've not got Villa on that list anymore, and Villa did look like a correct. bit of a scary proposition at that point. Yeah, no, but that's I think correct. I, I think, um, but I think like Liverpool, and maybe also I'm just looking at Liverpool through the sort of lens of what their last 10, 10 days to two weeks has looked like, and I'm now looking at you know Fulham, Everton, and West Ham, and thinking they're much more difficult than I did two or three weeks ago. But I, I, I think. And, and it, it, I just think Liverpool look mentally just just gone. Like I think I think the I think the FA Cup rocked them, and then but they still came back in the league between that and the next United game. But then you know that United game was just so bad. One, just just knocked the stuffing out of them. Atalanta like three nil like in the in, uh, at home as well. Like yeah, it's, it's just terrible. like at home in Europe is fucking awful. Like that is so bad, and then. You know, to top that off with getting beat by Crystal Palace, like that is a, a, a there. In if you were to, 
that is potentially them out of this quadruple they've been fucking banging on about for since since Klopp since Klopp announced his his, um, his resignation or his, his leaving whatever you want to call it. That is potentially out of th- pretty much every single one of those trophies in the space of ten days. Like that what is- you're saying is Klopp's kids are better than Klopp's first team. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you remember yeah. Joe? You remember on All or Nothing when we had that two-week period where we had the Champions League. We got beat by Liverpool. Yeah, and then I think, I think it was the United game. Was it United where we beat where we got beat three-two at the Etihad? Oh, was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and oh, it was yeah. that that two-week period was disgusting. I feel like Liverpool have just gone through a pretty similar situation. Yeah. Also, just, just, just FYI, they're, they're going to have a got Martin. They're going to have a documentary out as well. So we'll be able to. Yeah, see. yeah, I've read that. Read that. We'll yeah, see I'll be watching that. Today. No, uh, they've yeah. got four away games on the bounce, haven't they? Now Liverpool as well, three in the league, one in the Europa, because they've got the Atalanta return like next week. So they've got yeah, Fulham, Everton, West Ham, and Atalanta now. Yeah, they're going to have to go all in for yeah. um, but for Atalanta as well in Italy. They can't afford to rest players if they've and got any aspirations is, through that. I know this may be a different arsehole this season. They have been very, very good. You know, give the devil a jib. But remember Southampton last season when they dropped? Yeah. And then they went on this run, West Ham, Liverpool, yeah. they all just started collapsing around them. Game being yeah. owned by Villa, I'm going to be very intrigued to how they perform next week at Wolves. Mm, yeah. Because it, it, that could be sorry, an interesting one because Chelsea at home suddenly becomes a different game. The North London Derby, very different game. We all keep laughing at United. But there's only us going there and winning at the minute. Everyone else is rocking up and struggling against them. Chelsea, for some reason, have gone under the radar. They're actually on a really good run at the moment, and everyone's ignored it. Yeah, and their record yeah, against the top side is pretty good. So I, it's not yeah. as easy. I, I'm i with LB, though. Looking at that, if we win our next four, the other two have to win their next five just to make that Spurs game matter. If we win those four, which is very possible, they're all tough. And Forest, I think, is very tough, going to be really tough. But if we win those four, we go to Spurs, and even a loss wouldn't matter if, unless those two have won all their games. And in my view, there is no way Arsenal and or Liverpool are going to win all their next five. I just don't mm. don't be. If Arsenal win that next that group of Wolves, Chelsea, Tottenham, Bournemouth, United then credit to them. But I, yeah, I can see them dropping yeah. points in three of those games. I think, off the I think yeah. I, I, I had genuinely playing three of the big six, including two of your biggest Premier League rivals in the last four games of the season in this situation is like, like if, if it, it, like peak, peak Centurion slash 18-19 slash treble winning City, I would be looking at that and thinking, nah, this isn't happening. And I'd, and and Arsenal are a million miles away from that. So, mm. yeah, I think I think that they they'll be very very lucky to get through. Basically, I think both Arsenal and Liverpool are definitely going to drop points. I bit I I've kind of and this might bite me in the arse in a few weeks time. I've written I I've personally written Liverpool off completely. Like I think they're just I think they're just they're done. Like they're, they're physically they look done. Tactically, they look done. Emotionally, that that ground is. It's probably it's probably quite a good thing for them. They've only got two games at home for the rest of the season because that that stadium is probably on its ass like emotionally now. Um, I think mm. yeah, I, I, and Arsenal looking at that fixture list, there is absolutely no way that they go through that with six wins. Like no way. Like like no Tone way. says, if they yeah. do if they do that, then they deserve to win the league. To be honest, if they yeah. if they get yeah. through this, if they get through this bunch of fixtures, you know like that. mate. Is Pep Guardiola is sat there now. Game week 32. 30, yeah, 32. We're finally, by the way, clear now top of the league. I can't see Pep and the players not doing this now. I, I that agree. Group yeah. And that manager stood there going, right, lads, you six games. Mm-hmm. This is it. You wanted this and you wanted this and you wanted this and you wanted this. You are now in that position. Mm-hmm. I just can't see us messing this up. Mm. No, no, I agree. I've, I've seen people saying, "Oh, Arsenal drop out the Champ League; they'll be able to focus." It's nonsense. That that argument's nonsense because last season they dropped out to Lisbon, and everyone said, "Oh, they'll win all their remaining league games." Got a week off now. 
it yeah. doesn't work yeah. that way. It does yeah. not work that way. If Arsenal drop to buy Munich, I can guarantee you they will drop points in at least two or three of them games. They they will their heads will go. Bayern Munich for them now mm. is their whole season. If they beat Munich, they could go on a run. They could because it did the, 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 the buzz. Still get think it'd be tough though, Tom. Still think that'd be tough. I think will, the, um, will, mate, yeah. I think if they I think if they went out to Bayern now, I think this would feel this would be too much like a repeat of last season. I think that I think there's no way that any player in that dressing room doesn't think if they go out of Europe this season and have have had their first sort of points dropped in this in this title race, a lot of the people in there are going to be thinking, "Oh fucking hell, this is last season all over again." And all it takes is for just that little bit to switch in your head, and then you're already you're saying it, it, Joe. Some of the fans are already um, switched to that now. They're yeah, all gone. Yeah. Oh, right. And look, I, I always look at full-time reactions of players. Body language, mentality. That's why I go back to that Southampton game at the Emirates, watch them all, they all drop to the floor to a man, and they're all like, we're done. Mm. And the yeah. thing is, Arteta's a clever boy, Klopp's clever. They're both in the dressing rooms going, we've just given the whole league out to Pep Guardiola again. Yeah. And then, and you look at it today. There was a couple of our look at the way Liverpool walked off that pitch. They were done. The, Liverpool were, no. The, the, Liverpool, the, the Liverpool players know that it's it's done. Yeah. And, and the bad thing for them is they're probably out of the Europa League as well. Whereas Arsenal, yeah. at least, in nice got... reaction today. There was a couple of Arsenal yeah. players that were like, oh, like you just said, here we go again. This yeah, but at least they've still got Champions League, bro. At least they've got a chance of getting through yeah. the Champions League. Whereas Liverpool yeah. season, it just appears like it's just fallen off. And yeah, but I'll like, be honest with you, a Liverpool fans haven't been arrogant little sods all season. So <laughs> I, I don't have as much hate. Arsenal have been so arrogant this season, their fan base, it's unreal. Yeah, they have. They have. It, it, another massive thing, though, is City rested, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't know how many players, but a lot of players yesterday, ready for Real Madrid. We're still whacking 5-1. Squads, Gerd Nunes comes in and whoever else comes in, Alvarez and so on. Arsenal didn't make that many changes, if any, from the you know from their sh- strongest team. They probably can't because they got Villa, Liverpool, Palace. I think that was their first team. Correct me if I'm wrong, but they had McAllister, Van Dijk, Salah, Allison was back. I think that, I think that was yeah, on. that was pretty much their entire first team. I think yeah, exactly right. So they're having to play these games. Klopp can't rest six mm. seven players. Pep can. Pep can rest six or seven and. I hope he plays the first team, but he could go to Brighton conceivably, rest five or six players and we win the game. If Liverpool rest five or six players or Arsenal do in their current mental state, they're fucked. They're, mm. they're done. Yeah. It's um like I say, it's 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 two teams who know how this feels and they can yeah. see the pattern starting to repeat itself. And it, this is this is where I mean to be honest, if you're if you're an Arsenal or Liverpool, I don't think Liverpool fans really are gonna be that they're, they're gutted because Klopp's going, but I think I think even the most staunch Liverpool fan would be able to say, based off this season, that they're very, 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 very lucky to even be here in the first place. Like they've had I've watched I've watched Liverpool like dozens of times this season, and every single one I've thought, how the fuck have these won this? Or how have these not lost? And I think that I think this is this last 10 days is kind of like the 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 average the mean like averaging out. Like I think that's just what this is. But if you're an Arsenal fan, you're you're, you're, if you're an Arsenal fan, you're looking at this, thinking this is where we find out if this is where we find out if the team has actually genuinely come on and developed since last year, and whether that experience of last year has actually has actually made us better. Because mm. honestly, I think I think losing today might be. I'm still confident though. I think they'll only really drop points in one. I know that I know that we've looked at how mad that fixture list is, but I don't look at it and think. Hey, oh, yeah, I think they'll only drop points against like it'll be it'll be Spurs. I reckon that they'll drop points against. I think. But if they drop points, say say they draw, yeah, yeah, that that gives us what what can we do? Then we could lose a game. Or... We could we yeah we have it. But then that means we that we're lose. four points ahead of them. In in if all, all things even after that, we're four points ahead of them. So we have mm. a we have a loss cushion at that point. Yeah, we could we could lose. So this is this is why, why I just think it'd be. It'd be pretty unbelievable if City don't go on from here for to win the league. Because if you look yeah. at the fixtures, Arsenal, yeah, even if they draw one game, City can lose a game, and the yeah. same with Liverpool. You know, Liverpool's yeah. probably like they've probably got easier fixtures, but they their heads just look like they've gone. 
They do ten you, twelve he, games and with it, but six games. Nah, I don't. If we don't I, win it for me, know, man, it's poor. It's poor. I'd, I'd say we should probably even go. Well, I won't say, say it. No, don't say it. I know. I'm I know. You were going to say, say Pep out, out, Martin. No, no, you're going to say that. That sounds an awful. That sounds an awful lot. Like uh, that sounds an awful like lofty expectations for this team. That Martin. That's uh, that sounds like you're expecting a lot from this group of players. Martin, have you got standards? Have you got high standards for this team? <laughs> no, I'm not, the, no, I'm not. He has high standards in the last six games of the season. Great counts, <laughs> great matters. Chelsea treble for P sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea, Chelsea will be a tough one for Arsenal because of the way they counter on on the pace. Uh, terrible English. They're, they're quick on the counter, Chelsea. You know, I think all the games are hard. Can hurt Arsenal. I can literally make a case, Tom, that every single one of those games is hard. Wolves away, yeah, it, tough ground. Bournemouth. Chelsea, yeah. tough. Spurs, tough. Yeah. Bournemouth, tough. Yeah. United, tough. Everton, tough. Like, literally, every game's a tough game. Throwing Especially the fact that Bayern Munich. Yeah. I think, I, mean, yeah. I, I will... I will... I will boldly say, and this might not actually be that bold, but that we're not gonna. It's not gonna come down to the final day. We'll know. We'll know who's won the league by the end of by like the, the at the start of that game. Like we will know which one of those clubs is getting presented with a trophy at the end of it. Like we'll we'll know. It, it's not gonna be down to. We're not gonna be sat there. We're not gonna be sat there watching us go one nil down to West Ham, thinking what the fuck's going on here, boys? Like, we have the chance to win it. Like it, it, it's gonna be. We go one nil down to West Ham, and we're all gonna be, you know, we're all gonna be wanking off West Ham fans because that's what City fans do. And we're all like, hey, it's funny, isn't it? West and Ham, then, Manchester um, City. Yeah, West Ham. <laughs> yeah, Curly Watts and all that just bouncing around. Um, yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. Yeah, it's gonna be. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be I think. I think we'll know. Like no matter who, whether it's us, whether it's Arsenal, whether it's Liverpool, I think it'll be. It'll, it'll be done. It'll be dusted by that final game of the season, I reckon. I reckon Spurs will be giving us the guard of honour. That's my prediction. I'm going all out on it. We, we will walk yeah, into Spurs as champions. I, I, think, I think it'll be won. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sound real. I'm trying to think of workout <laughs> dates. Bear in mind, so, we, it, it, like, so let's say if Arsenal drop points in, say, three of those... Then we will need to hit one sec to work out the maths. I'm working out can we be champions after the Wolves game at home? That's what I'm trying to work. We need no, we need eight the, points. Yeah, so we need yeah for for it to be mathematically impossible. Yeah, eight points. So we can't do it From by 18. Wolves. Actually, we could. We could do it by oh, winning could. Wolves. At That's home. what I mean. Beat Wolves. Yeah, nine points. But that That's means Liverpool will yeah. have to lose every game between now and then. <laughs> I'd love it, but no, no, don't see that. Yeah, I, I'd say no, 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 Anything else you guys wanted to speak about on the fixtures or, or anything else before we uh, bring this show to We've a got close? a little game on Wednesday night, by the way, where we're all sat here talking about Premier League. Like, it's all dead easy. <laughs> not real Madrid two Wednesday games. night. Yeah, two cup games now. Massive week. I, ju- yeah, I genuinely, week. like, I, I don't know if it's just because I'm, like, I'm so tunnel visioned on the league, but I couldn't care less what happens in these next two games, mate. Like, I just want the, I just want the four, Pete. I don't, I, I want four, I want the four Premier Leagues. I don't care about honestly. If we go out of the Champions League and lose to Chelsea and win the Premier League, I'll be I'll be a happy man. Like whatever happens in this next week doesn't really bother me. Four P. Never incredibly... been done in the history of this country, man. That's still insane. finding yeah. mad we're top of the league. I'm looking at it going. We're not just top. We're too clear. What has happened? This is mad. Mm. It is crazy. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's incredibly. Oh, sorry. Go on, go go on. on man. Go on. I was only going to say that I was incredibly relaxed just to see what Joe was saying there. Um, Real Madrid away. And it, of course we want to win. Joe will want City to win. But I'm incredibly yeah. relaxed because we won it. If we hadn't won the Champions League, I'd be much more, I'd like, say, we've got to win. I'm nervous mm-hmm. as hell. Went into that game. Honestly, I was watching it. Even when we're losing, I was like, oh, we're fine. We'll be fine. I still think we'll be fine. Yeah. Sorry, that, that was it. <laughs> Ah, chilling, chilling. Big up to LB with the super chat. Says we are the real mentality monsters. We got this. 
He also says Arsenal centre-backs get no rotation at all. They look knackered. Well, it's it's no surprise that they've dropped a couple of dodgy performances, isn't it? Maybe, mm-hmm. again, they're just, they pressure's are just on. too tired. Yeah, the pressure's on. Um, I actually seen Lee Joe. I watched uh, obviously I was straight to AFTV after the uh, after the loss. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been on yet. Don't give me spoilers. Get yourself <laughs> on, bro. Get yourself some popcorn. But I seen Lee Judges yeah. say, um, Gabriel and Salibra for as good as they've been this year, and obviously they have been good. He says they mm. cannot be considered like world class or some of the best Arsenal defenders until they do it in the pressure moments, which is I thought was very fair of him. And yeah. um uh, Dr. Footy says Paqueta last minute goal versus Liverpool, and we will shout City, says Dr. Footy is a Villa fan. paqueta has gone crap now since he's agreed that deal with City. He's gone he's down to Villa. He's in Manchester. Stop playing he's for him. him. He's heads in Manchester, yeah. mate. I saw West Ham fans really laying into him earlier. That's what I mean, they're absolutely 20 killed quid him, or something. Get out yeah. of there. Just to yeah. say on Arsenal there, LB, what you're saying about Lee saying, but that goes for all their teams. Saka gets rave, raves and raves. He did another no-show pretty much today. Odegaard was all right first half. But all these players that get raved about by Arsenal fans, it, there's nothing wrong with sticking by your players, of course, but they go bloody way over the top. Where are they again today? You know what I mean? Same, same thing what Lee was saying. I don't know anyone in their team that you could truly say is, Genuine world class elite mentality. Any any players in that eleven? Well, I, they've I got. You've actually gone through the starting eleven today, Tom. I mm. did it before. I think they've got seven players at a push that have actually won stuff. Right. That's not and and you know you need you need you need That's people mad. who've been there. Yeah, yeah. yeah you need people crazy. who've been there and done it. And, and by the way. In the, in the in the couple of players that I didn't include that, I included players like Zinchenko, who, who was sort of like in and out of the team at City, you know, was in it for a Jesus. while. Jesus, the same. Um, I put Rice in there, I think, by the way, who's only won a conference league. Yeah. So uh, I was I was being like generous to them to try and like put players in the category, but they, yeah, they've got they've got a real lack of experience in there. That's why I said all along. I think I think losing Granite Shaka was a big a big a big loss for them in the summer. Despite mm. I know a lot of Arsenal fans are not massive fans of him, but the experience that he brings, um, I think. Big loss. Um, I think. Sorry, I know you want to wrap this up, but I think another. That's I think cool. another. I think another problem that they've got is that they're not winning cups. Like the the, the way you yes. get the experience of winning of, of, of winning is by winning stuff. But it sounds like they Completely. just got no interest in winning the cups. Like if they if they you know I don't know what the I don't know what the strength of the play, of the teams is that are putting out for the competitions, but. They, they've been knocked out of like the, the the league cup and the and the FA Cup pretty early on this year, and it's like, but those are the those are how you get trophy winning oh, experience, and exactly. that's why that's that's why we did so many leagues off the back of winning the league cup in Feb and just like riding that wave to the end of the season. Like that happens a lot, but this the, but for whatever reason, Arsenal just don't seem interested in the in 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 that. Like they're just not bothered about the trophy about the trophies that aren't the Premier League or the Champions League, which is a bit mad when you haven't when you, if you <laughs> which if you're if you're like us and you've won that, been there, done that, then cool focus on the Premier League and the Champions League. But if you're Arsenal and you've got a team of yeah. players who haven't won anything, then why are you not doing that? Yeah, there's a good comment from what's that, what's that name? Craig Party time on there saying about Arsenal and the pathetic performance at the Etihad. And we all said there and then we said they didn't play like they wanted to win the league. They played for a draw. They celebrated at the end like they'd won the bloody thing. They they come to our place against a very weakened city who got injuries on the day as well, looking a little bit ropey. They just didn't go for it. And that that was the day to me when I said, and I said back then, I said Arsenal will not win the title. And they still could, by the way, but I don't think they will. And that was the first day I, I saw. I had a slightly different view on it in that, I I understood what Arteta did in that game in the sense that he effectively set his team up for a 1v1 with Liverpool. At least what I said at the time. He didn't yeah. have to think about City. But the problem is, is that the fixtures that he had coming up was crazy. Uh, and, you know, whilst at the time, I said at the time, I thought that like the decision to do it was a brave call and you'd only find out if it was the correct thing um, come the end of the season. But it comes back to what someone put in a chat before, maybe a super chat or just a general comment in that, you know, to, to to win Premier Leagues, you've got to win games and you've got to risk losing, you know. And Declan Rice there saying, you know, 15 minutes to go, he's basically saying we should have just took a point 
Uh, we should have just took a point against Villa because, you know, it is what it is. We shouldn't lose. No, 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 no. That's the wrong mentality. And by the way, mm. I question this mentality sometimes because over the years, there's been some games that we've played where we've been shit, yeah, and we've been drawing the game and we keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And it just feels to us, I just feel like we should just take the point. Remember Leeds? Remember Leeds game? We lost 2-1. Two, yeah. Two, yeah. Remember Brentford? Yeah. We lost 2-1. All of these games we deserve to lose. We got ourselves back in the game. We were drawing and we kept pushing and pushing and pushing and end up getting caught. Whereas if we just took the point, you probably think, good, but you've got to risk losing because draws are dead now anyway. You know, when you go into 90 points to win a Premier League title, you know what I mean? Draws are basically like losses. You, you, you got to remember, guys, the lower the requirement of points to win the league, yeah, the more valuable a draw is. If you can win a league on 74 points, draws are mega, yeah? But if you need 90 plus points to win a league, clearly the value of a single point goes down. That's just how it works, man. It's just maths. It's not that, it's not that difficult. Um, I think I think that's the rest of the super chats. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Right. I think we're pretty much done, boys. But I agree on that. Great point, Joe, on, on the cups. I actually said last year, I think the biggest mistake Arteta did was um play a, a rotated back line at the city stadium when he come come to us in the FA Cup. But um, yeah, listen, we're done. Happy days. Big up, Joe, for coming on, man. appreciate it, as always. Um, yes, Martin, good, thank you very much. you got a show tomorrow night, haven't you? Half nine, I think it is, is it? Nine. I think. Nine. Nine, nine p.m. Yeah, Real Cool. Come on, show. Um, with a few people. With a few I'll people. Be there, mate. Tones on, the tones on. This is a Real Madrid preview, guys. Get, get yourselves on it. Um, I've got Elbins tomorrow at 11 a.m. And then I'm on with Saeed, Midday Live. By the way, I didn't realise this. The only City fan on Midday Live tomorrow, well, the only fan on the panel who won. Everyone else lost. The only fan that didn't lose was Chelsea. They don't play till tomorrow night anyway. So it should be an interesting <laughs> show. Listen, guys, we've had over 2,300 people tuned in watching live. So I appreciate everyone for tuning in. Big numbers. Make sure you drop a like on the stream if you're watching on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. And uh, if you're watching on Twitter... We don't always stream on Twitter, but, um, you know, if you like the content, make sure you come over to the YouTube channel. And, um, yeah, I guess we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.